Kumlan and Ablak Gemara. We are up to the Nun Aleph, Amar Aleph. So we're going now back to what we talked about before the argument that I made, Rabbi Yaakov, with the Tanakama. The Tanakama laid down a rule that a carbon tzibur does, you know, there's all these wonderful things in the carbon yachid, and they both argue and they say the, the, the criteria is not carbon tzibur, carbon yachid. They gave different examples by a carbon yachid where it is doicha, and they gave an example of a carbon tzibur that's not. And one the, and by a carbon pesa, they call it carbon yachid, uh, sorry, carbon tzibur. And we hear over here also, a Chagiga, sorry, a Chagiga, they call it carbon tzibur. And, and, and the pesa is not actually a carbon tzibur. So the question is, why would a Chagiga be considered a carbon tzibur? Every individual on Yom Tif has to bring a carbon Chagiga. So why is a carbon Chagiga considered an individual, uh, a collect carbon? Contrast that with the carbon Pesach that uh, every individual has to bring, and you call that a carbon yachid. It says the Gemara, right in the middle of the page of Nun Aleph, Amar Aleph, the first word of the line is carbon. So why does the, the, the use example of a carbon tzibur, a carbon chagiga, which does not push away Shabbos and all that, so they disprove the idea that it's tzibur. Uh, because all the Eden gather together and then bring it together. Pesach nami also bechnufia. Pesach also they got together, even though it's three different groups, but between the three groups, the entire Klal Yisrael. Uh, so one answers, Ika Pesach sheni delay ose bechnufia. The problem with carbon Pesach is that carbon Pesach is two carbon Pesachs. Sochim. There's Pesach Rishon and there's Pesach sheni. And at Pesach sheni, most of the Jews already brought it up, so it's not bechnufia anymore. So therefore, we categorize Karm Pesach as an individual Karm. Says Gemara, I'm Malay. I'm Malay. He said to him, uh, in Cain, if you tell me that Karm Pesach includes Pesach Sheni, so if so, um, so why don't we say that Karm Pesach is also and also and doiche to as well. You tell me that current Pesach includes Pesach Sheni, so why doesn't it um, also push away Shabbos and and the what it called and Yom Tov and Tuma? Um, he said, "You're right. It does. What do you mean it does? Who holds that Pesach Sheni does? Commander Omar Dochi. When we say over here that Pesach." We gave an example of Pesach, which is a carbon yachid. It pushes away Shabbos and pushes away Tumah. You're telling me that the contrast with drawing between Chagig and Pesach includes Pesach Sheni. So it must be that Pesach Sheni is Deich Shabbos and Tumah. Where, where is it heard of that Pesach Sheni is Deich uh, Shabbos and Tumah? So he answers, yes. The Tanya, there is a, an opinion that says Pesach Sheni, Deich Shabbos. One opinion says Pesach Sheni is Deich Shabbos, but they know Deich Tumah. It's not Deich Tumah. And Abihud says, Af, Deich Tumah. So therefore, this this Tana here, who used an uh, example of Pesach being a, a, a carbon yachid, and it still pushes away Shabbos and Tumah, is um, is Rabbi Huda, who holds that Pesach Sheni is Deich what, What's that, that? What does it mean that it's Deich there? If they're Tameh, if they become Tameh, if all the people who are bringing Pesach Sheni become Tameh, it'll be Huda B'Tzibur again, they can all bring it to Tumah. So we're not talking about the individual, we're talking about all the people, the majority of the people who are there for Pesach Sheni became Tameh. So um, the Buddha says, well, Hutra B'tzibur. Now what's going on here? What's the machlek? Is why did the Tanakhama say that? No, it's not Doichet Tumah. The Buddha says it is. My time in the Tanakhama, what's the logic of Tanakhama? Pesach Lishen Hutra B'tzibur, why not Pesach Sheni? I'm going to tell you very simply. The whole reason why we even have a Pesach Sheni is because you were talking about Pesach Lishen, so in order to rectify that, we moved to Pesach Sheni. What do we gain if you're going to bring it to Tumah Pesach Sheni? You could have done Pesach Lishen as well. The whole reason why we brought it here is so we want to find an opportunity for you to bring a batara. So therefore, there's no such thing as a Pesach Sheni. If, if, if you're still telling me we didn't gain anything, we're not going to allow you to do Pesach Sheni either. So that's why that Tanakh Amah holds no Pesach Sheni if, when it comes to Tumah. However, Rabbi Huda says, the Pesach clearly says, Oh, my God, says the Pesach, Pesach that the second Pesach follows all the rules of the first Pesach, and, and oh, including the rule, Vafila Batuma. We gave you an opportunity to do betara. Didn't work out. Okay, we rely on the laws that the tumah hutra betzibur because we follow in the second pesach like, all the laws of the first pesach. That's the machlekes. So then, so what I may have said about a carbon yachid, and he used pesach as an example that pushed away shabbos tumah. He agrees with Rabbi Huda that it's the deichet tumah as well pesach sheni. According to Rabbi Huda, it's a very strong nishlok and falfalan. 
yeah, in a way, yeah. But in his way, you didn't pick yourself up. You're in the same place where you where you started. But you still can do the cauldron. True, but you as a person haven't changed. The other ones, you changed. You became tired. I guess you can look at it different ways. Says the Gemara, you asked a question before. You know, go back to the other question we asked before. Okay, we asked about Tamura. Do we look at Aaron Hakoyin? So he's a Yachid. He could make a Tamura with his bull. Do we look at the Mishapri, which are the Koyinim, all the rest of the Koyinim, and therefore so they cannot make a Tamura because they're Rabim? And then we explained that we're following that really it's Aaron's, it's Aaron's carbon. And the question is, what's the relation of the rest of the coining? Are they are they they buying into the as if they're an integral part of the animal, and therefore we always follow the mishaprim, or do we say they're just floating above? In other words, it's really Adam's carbon because he's bringing it for himself, and then once he does, they're a drag along, so they have no chelik in the carbon, and therefore it's Adam's carbon, and it could make it more. That was a question we asked before. So you want to why don't we answer the, the question the following as what as follows? Three times it says a pasuk. Asheloi, it says in the passage that Anna Koyin should bring the parachatas Asheloi. That's once. And then it says a little bit later, it says that Anna should bring the parachatas Asheloi. He'll forgive for his family. And he should shech the chatas Asheloi. Three times it says Asheloi. That's his carbon. Why does it say it says three times that it's his carbon? So the reason is as, as follows. <clears throat> the Amr um, Rahman, first of all, Mishaloi made the first passage is Pasha Yunid Lagufa. That Aaron has to pay for his own money, bring his own carbon. The Tanya, we learn Ashaloi, Mishaloi, you may be even Loi Mishal Tzibur. It has to be his own carbon and not the communal carbon. Yochel, I would have thought, Lo Yovi Mishal Tzibur. Okay, the reason why he doesn't bring from the communal coffers, because remember, this carbon is a kapata for him and for the rest of the Kainim. Why should Klai Yisrael uh, reimburse him for that? Why should they pay him for that? Could they have no benefit from it? So why should they use the communal coffers? Fine. Maybe you should make a collection between all the Koinim. Since you're all benefiting from this carbon, you should all pay into it as well. They're also beneficiaries. That's what says the second time. To be his carbon. I would have thought, Okay, Aaron should not take money from the rest of the Kainim, just use his own money. But if he brought money from the rest of the Kainim, all right. We have a third time, we say a third time that it has to be no, it has to be his own closet. We have a rule by Kachim. We have a rule by Kachim that says that if the Taita says Asab only once, means it's limits. If the Taita repeats the same thing twice by Kachim, it means this is how it should be, and there's no other way. It's Ma'akiv as well. And therefore, it's Ma'akiv. Says the Gemara, for the time make and according to you. So, so, so therefore, it's, it's, it says three times Asheloi. So, my question is: So, what's your shy live the coin and have a chalik in a nuts? Clearly, it's Aaron Hakoyan's carbon. So, therefore, he could make a tamura. The other coin are not part of it. Says the Gemara. Um, so you're learning, you take it literally, that other koinim have no part of it. So let me ask a question. The time that according to where you understood, all the rest of the koinim, if the koinim tell me they have absolutely no chelik in the carbon, how in the world does it work for them? How could it be that Anna koinim's carbon, which you're telling me, Ashaloi means the Taylor says all the time, his, 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 somehow another is machape for everybody else. How? If they have nothing to do with it. Ellen of us, you can tell me, shiny because of the Aaron, that, it, um, that the Balabatosh kind of Aaron is different. The Afker Rachmona Gabi Echava Koinim, the Tayyid clearly said, the Tayyid clearly said that this is going to be Mechape for him and for his and, and, and the wider family and so on and so forth. And um, the rest of the Koinim, even though they have no Chedek, the Tayyid said, I'm going to be Mafkarit so that you all can have a Chedek in it. Is Hachanami. So maybe that's my question. Even though they have no chalik in it, the Torah gave them a chalik. Even though they don't contribute financially, but the Torah says this belongs to all the kainim. So that's why my question is regarding tomorrow. How do we view the relationship between the rest of the kainim with the animal? Maybe the Torah says that all other kainim have a chalik in this carbon for kapara. They also have a chalik in this carbon as far as tomorrow is concerned, and therefore tomorrow cannot be done or not. That's the question. But the pile, what the Bryce is saying is financially they don't they don't contribute. That's a given. Question is, but the traders nevertheless stepped in and said that they have a chalik. So how far do we take that chalik? We continue now with that blade of the coin bottle. This Masechta Yuma is a rare Masechta. I mean, a couple of others, but the very rare Masechta that the entire Masechta is focused. Very few, very few tangents. We've, we just focused on the activities of the coin bottle on Yom Kippur, and then the end, whatever else has to do with Yom Kippur. 
So um, it says the Mishnah, um, so now the Kohen Godel went, and um, okay, so he had over here, he has his ladle, he has his shovel with a with a coal, and now he has to walk to the Kodesh Gadashim. The question is, did he make a beeline? Did he make a detour? How did he walk into the Kodesh Gadashim? So very big kids, uh, in, in the first, in the Mishkan, there was just a thin curtain between dividing the Kodesh and the Kodesh HaKadoshim. The, you know, the Hegel, the room that before, where the Mizbeach was and where the, where the, the what do you call it, the Meneda and the Shulchan. And then there was a curtain dividing, and then there was the, the Kodesh HaKadoshim with the Aron inside it. The first base of English, they had a wall, and it was called an Amatraxin. The wall was one Amat thick, and it's called Traxin. Rashi always says Traxin means, Trax means, um, Track means facing outside and sin is Sinai because it was also the other side was facing the Oran which came from Sinai. Then you had in the second base of Midrash because the ceiling was so high, they couldn't, uh, a wall that was only one arm thick wouldn't work and they had no right to make it any thicker because Hakum Ikrami Yad Hashem. Don't know, you have to follow the rules exactly the way the Abisha told me. So you can only do an armor. So therefore, most opinions are that they had two curtains, one curtain facing the, the, the Kodesh, then there was a gap of an Amma, and then there's another curtain facing the Kodesh HaKadosh. That's what they did. And um, the, the kids, they didn't know, when we say this Amma Traxin, we've seen tomorrow, tomorrow, they didn't know the Amma Traxin in the first base of Migdush, that the thickness of the wall itself, the depth of that wall, was that part of Kodesh or was that part of Kodesh HaKadosh? Because now that you're in, you remove that thickness, and there's a gap there. That gap of an amr is that part of Kodesh, or is that part of Kodesh Gadosh? And uh, and obviously it's important to know because if it's part of Kodesh Gadosh, nobody can walk into there. If it's part of Kodesh, then the Kohen Gadol has to know that he cannot stand out in front of the, the outer curtain and stand in front of the inner curtain to do his uh, sprinkling towards the Kodesh Gadosh because the outer curtain is still part of Kodesh. So they weren't sure. So they had a gap of an amr, and they also made that the entrances of the of this there shouldn't be in the same place. They obviously had to walk in from a corner. They used to take part of it and you know and and, and move the attach the curtain a little bit higher up so that the coin can walk in into the Khajim, but there was a little gap but they had it on the corner. So um, if you were facing the base, remember if you're facing you're coming from the east side and due west is the Khajish Akadoshim. Due north is your right side and that's where the Shulchan was and do um, south is your left side, and that's where the Menorah was. And in the epicenter was a Mizbech, pulled forward a little bit. It, it didn't intersect between the table and the, the Menorah. And, um, and the Kohen had to walk in to go to the Kohen. So therefore, facing the Kohen of the entrance, first entrance on the south side, and then you walk through the gap, and you went all the way north to the other, to the other side to go to the second curtain, where the entrance was on the north side, and then you enter the Kodesh Kodesh. So we don't want it to be visible. No, nobody should be able to stand in any section of the room and peer through that little gap in the curtain to see what's inside the Kodesh Kodesh. So now we're going to have an argument how the coin made his route. Says the Gemara, the coin God was walking now in that big room, the Heichel. Now the Heichel, remember, was 40 Amis, was 40 Amis, um, it was 20 Amis wide. 20 amas wide. So, he's walking the Hechel until he arrived, until he arrived between the two curtains that separated between these two rooms. There was a gap of an amma over there. Abiyasi says, No, I disagree with this whole concept. I think Abiyasi didn't have the suffix. So, the reason why they had two curtains is because of the suffix they didn't know. Abiyasi says, I don't have a suffix. The only thing is, we're not sure if Rabbi Yaisi held that the curtain was part of Kaidish or part of Kaidish Gedashim, but he said there's only one curtain. Shemem it says, and possibly, Dila Parachis Lachem, this singular, Bena Kaidish, Ben Kaidish Gedashim, there's one Parachis dividing, the, intersecting the two parts of the Beis HaMikdash. Says, Yikamadu Chaydish, Shapik, Kamal, Beis Rabban, but Rabbi Yaisi says the correct thing. But Rabban, Rabban will tell you, Hani, me, Libe Mishkin, you're right, in the Mishkin there's only one curtain. And the first Beis HaMikdash was made out of conch, made out of rocks and stones, was only, it was an armor thick. Our the Migdash Shani, second base of Migdash, Kivan the Lahava Amma Traxin. They didn't have this, this Amma of Traxin, which I told you what Rashi says it means um, inside and, and outside. Or Tracer says it means track means to close, and Sin means in front of Sinai, in front of the Arun. Rashi says track means facing inside, and Sin means outside. In other words, you have one curtain towards the Kodesh and another curtain to a Kodesh Gedoshim. Well, the Migdash so, so where, 
where exactly did the wall go and where was the curtain in the base Rishon? There was no curtain on them. It doesn't seem there was a curtain in the base Rishon at all. So what? So you had a, you had a wall. So where was That's it? it? But how did you, how did you, where did you enter the Kedush HaKadoshim? There must have been, there must have been a door. Oh, okay. So, so was the doorway, would have been Mamish in front of the island or would have been to, to the left or to the right? I don't know where the door is. I don't know. How come they didn't just build an Amit in the Bay Shani? Because I just told you, the scene that we had, we'll have in Morba Basel, Gil and Alvin, what talks about there, that, you know, a, a wall that's certain height, four Amas high, you can have an Amit thick to hold it. But if the wall is a lot greater height than that, you need a much wider, um, much thicker wall. But in the base of Miglish, they were only allowed to build a, a, a partition that was an, up to an armor thick, no wider than that. So they couldn't build a wall. And then the more asked the question, so why don't you have part wall and part curtain? And the more says, Gamidi, that you know, that either doesn't work or we have a tradition, it can be part, half and half. So that's why so, I have no choice. So why couldn't they do that? Why, well, I don't understand. If in the base region, which was smaller, they could build it, so the base- That's why. In the base region, it was much lower ceiling, so they were able to put ah, the wall okay. on yeah, armor yeah. thick. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, okay. But but did when Hordus rebuilt it, did, did he rebuild the same dimensions or did he build different dimensions? It when seems like he followed the same dimension. dimension. He just made it a lot nicer. And the outer walls, whatever it is, but the basement itself he didn't tamper with. Over mig the Rabban wouldn't have allowed him. Over Migdash Rishan Huda Havoy. The face before the Midrash had this amatraxing. But the Istapkilul Rabban, and tomorrow we'll see exactly what the basis of this suffix is. It was based on a Pasik regarding the Dvir. But so Rabban had a suffix, uh, Big Dusha say, Rabban had a suffix regarding the Kedusha of that Amma, Ikilifnim, Ikilichut. How do we treat that Amma? Is it like considered like, a, is it like the Kodesh of Kedoshim? Is it like the Kodesh? Is therefore what they did was, of which they parochis, they built two curtains, one to the four, and they didn't want to make a thick curtain because they didn't know what the, th the thickness, that the, the gap of that amma, what is it? Kodesh, 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 and it'll be all kinds of issues. So therefore they built two curtains. Now, how exactly did the Kohen God will walk, make his, uh, his, his walk, entrance to the Kodesh, 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 Okay, the Mizbech is in the center of the room. The Menoide will be on the south side or the left side when you're walking through, it's on your left side. So they walked. Between the Mizbech, the Kohen God will walk between the Mizbech, and then he made a, a tour, a detour to the left a little bit, but not not all the way to the wall, a little bit off center. And he was between the Mizbech, which is in the epicenter of the room, and the Menorah, which is on the left. Divir Rabbi Yehuda. Rameyer says, no, he went through the right side. Ben Shulchan and Mizbech. Rameyer says that he went through the right side, which the Mizbech is an epicenter, the Shulchan was towards the right, and he walked between the Mizbech and the Shulchan. The Yesh, I mean, the third opinion, we'll soon see who that is. Ben Shulchan Le Kaisel, that he actually walked along the wall, along the perimeter of the wall. And so he, he went on the right side of the table, on the right side of the room, he went on the right side of the table, and he walked that way all around. And then he came to the curtains and he walked all the way to the left. And soon see if did he actually walk that way or not. Man Yashaimim, I'm looking at Yaisi. It's actually Rabbi Yaisi. Because Rabbi Yaisi said there's only one curtain, we who hold it with two curtains, so the first entrance was all the way on the left. Therefore, we had the coin either walking to the left or in the center, and then he made a left turn. But according to Rabbi Yaisi, there's only one curtain, the entrance was always on the right. So therefore, the coin, in order to enter, went on the right side. But he held, they walked along the perimeter of the wall until he came to the curtain area. So Ahmad, he says, Pis He says that the, the entrance was actually on the north side. There's only one curtain, was on the north side. <clears throat> Um, because the also agreed that the curtain closest to Kodesh Hashem, the entrance was on the right side, on the north side. But Abiyah holds only one curtain, so therefore it was always on the on the right side. Says so the Gemara, because um, everyone agrees the entrance to the Kodesh Hashem had to be from the right side. The reason why Hacham argues is because they hold there's another curtain in front, and that curtain in front, the entrance was on the left side. They didn't want people to be able to peek inside. Says so the Gemara, but Abiyah Yehuda will tell you. Since we hold that there were two curtains, we didn't want them to be lined up. So therefore, the, end, the first curtain, the entrance, all the way on the left. And therefore, because all the way on the left, so Rabbi Huda says that how did the Kohen God walk in? Toward the left side, between the Mizbech and the Menorah. No, that mayor. The mayor said he walks right down the middle, makes a beeline in the middle. Which way does he hold? The entrance on the right or the entrance on the left? The mayor, Kilcheri, commands Svidale. Who does he hold like? If he holds like Rabbi Yehuda, who holds at the entrance on the left, Svidale, Nail, Rabbi Yehuda, so let him have the Kohen Gadol walking in between the Mizbech and the Menorah, sort of going left. 
And Yikarabiyasi, so the Rabiyasi enters on the right, then he should walk nail Kirabiyasi, then go along the wall on the right side of the table. So why does he only walk down the middle? Says so the um, right? The says you walk between the Shulch Mizbech, the middle, and a little bit to the right. What's going on here? So we say no. The fact that he holds, he go towards the right because he holds him go between the shulchan and the and mizbech means that he held the entrances on the right. But he argues Rabbi Yisrael says you walk along the wall. And Rabbi Yisrael says no, you walk between the menorah and the shulchan. You're on the right side of the room, but not against the wall. What's going on here? Allah, but Rabbi Yisrael holds shulchanos tzafin v'dorim menachin. In other words, there's a big argument. We know Shlomo Melech added. Remember we had Rosh Kolim. Shlomo Melech added. 10 tables. And these 10 tables were like aligned with the table that Moshe Rabbeinu made, five and five. The question was, how was Moshe Rabbeinu's table made in the first place? You know, which direction was it? So the main hole that the tables, <coughs> that the tables were from north to south. In other words, from the right to the left. So you had Moshe's table from north, from right to the left, right, north to south. And then you had five tables, you know, um, due east and five tables due west also lined up from the north to the south now remember each table was two amas long so if you have five tables lined up from the wall on the right side to the middle of the room it's exactly 10 amas the entire room was 20 amas the table had to be on the right side of the room so the tables had to be mamish in close proximity to each other in fact they had all had to be contiguous to each other and the final table was touching the wall if the table was even a, 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 an inch away from the wall then part of the table will be creeping into the into the south side of the room because the room is exactly 20 amas wide. Each table is exactly two amas long. And since they were according to the mayor, he held that they weren't east to west lined up, which Rabbi Yassi holds they were. He holds they were from north to south. So if you had lined up five tables north to south, that's already 10 amas. So the tables had to be touching the wall. There was no room for, for anybody to walk between the table and the outer wall. So how did you walk? Had to walk between the tables and the mizbech, like in the middle of the room. So was, uh, it, shuch- was it a total of 10 tables or a total of, of, uh, of 11? 11. 10 that Shlema made and yeah. one that Moshe made. So that means you had, you had so according to this, you had 11 Amas. There was Everyone agreed. Amas into, into the, uh, into no, 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 no. There were three rows of tables. You had one row of five, then you had a row of one, which is Moshe's, and then okay. below that you had another row of five. There were three rows. They, none of those tables um, were contiguous to Moshe Rabbeinu. He was, he was, his was on his own. Because that's where you put the lechem upon him. And uh, remember, had a machlekes if they used Shlomo's tables for lechem upon him at all or not. So they used Moish, only Moish's table. It was on its own. But to, to give it, to adorn it, to give it more chshivas, they had these other tables lined up. Uh, so it was impossible to walk in because the table was right there. That's one answer. Another answer is, or I can say that even a maid will agree that you see the tables were due from east to west. So you had Moshe Abena's table in the middle, of, you know, they had on the right side of Moshe Abena's table five tables, 10 amas. So you had plenty of room because there's 20 amas along the room. And you had the left side, there's plenty of room. You could have walked between the tables, the, the table, you know, plenty of room to walk because of five spare amas. But Mayor felt because of the shina, it passed niche that um, to uh, what do you call to walk um, along, creep along the wall as if you're sneaking in. The mayor, the head, um, the problem is if you're going along the wall, not only it looks like you're creeping in, you're, you're looking. Remember, the entrance to the Kodesh is on the right side. If you're always against the wall, you can actually peer through the entrance of the of the of the parishes. And, and, and the Amatrax and, and see what's going on in the Kodesh Gedoshim. And it's not nice. You shouldn't be looking at all until you find the front, front up to that entrance. So therefore, it passed to be along the wall. No Rabbi Yaisi. So how could Rabbi Yaisi actually has the Kohen Gadol walking along the wall, preparing? Amala Chavivin Yisro. That's interesting what Rashi learns here. That the Abish loves the Eden so much. They don't need a shliach. What does that mean? So Rashi says an interesting thing here. Rashi says, what do you mean doesn't need a shliach? So Rashi says, I'll just say it was Rashi inside, three lines on the top. We don't have one person davening on behalf of everybody. Every, we don't need a shliach. We all daven on our own. It says, every person knows exactly what affects him. 
each one spreads out his hands towards his base of Migdash. Because we don't need a shliach, the Ebishter is prepared to have a personal relationship with every single one of us. So therefore, um, we when, when we when we make a shliach, which is the Kohen Gadol, is also the Ebishter loves him so much, and therefore he's allowed to walk at least on Yom Kippur along the wall, even though he's peering inside, because we have that special relationship and acknowledge that special relationship. In other words, the main davening is not the tefillah, but simply the main davening is the tefillah that each individual davens. That's what Rashi learns. The other Rashi don't like this chat at all. They don't understand exactly what he's saying. They all learn pshat is a whole year when the, the, he wears the eight begotten, the Kohen Gadol, the Nishma Koyle, when the Kohen Gadol walks in, he has, it makes noise. And we learn the learn before Mariuma. And it teaches us before you walk into your house, announce your arrival, don't frighten anybody, that's respectful. But I am Kippur when he walks in, he's wearing the four begotten, there's no noise. He doesn't make any noise because the Abish is, is expecting us. So there's no noise that has to be made. And that's the Chavivan. Chavivan is sort of a didn't need to make, didn't have to send out a forerunner. I'm coming in, I'm making, you know, make some bells and make some all kinds of noises. And therefore, because the Abish is expecting us, there's nothing wrong walking along the wall. Okay. Um, you know, there's an interesting Chakira in, in the Achreinim when we dab in it with a minion. Right, it's important to have the minion. What's the minion part? The chazars, the shots. When we're davening the shtilah shvanesa, the tefillah belachash, is that considered tefillah's tzibur or that's tefillah yachid? Each one is davening themselves quietly. What is that? Is when we say tefillah betzibur, is that only the chazars, the shots, or also the tefillah's yachid? Is also considered tefillah betzibur. And uh, they talk about this Rashi here. I can't remember which way they want to learn from this Rashi, but that somehow or another, the main thing of the davening is the tefillah of yachid of each individual. And that's what makes it so special. And, okay, anyway, says him further. But Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda, Nami. Okay, let's go back to Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says that you walk between the the the, the Menorah and the Mizbeach. Why doesn't he have you walking along the left wall? You know, I mean, the Menorah Why does he walk along the left wall? Um, and there, and there's no, in, and here there's no problem that you're looking into the Kaiser Gadashim because remember there's two curtains. So even though you can see through the entrance on the left side, what are you going to see? Another curtain. Why do you walk in the Menorah in a Kaisal? So we answer, because Mishchre Mane, because Mishchre um, Mane, his clothes will get all dirty and black. Because the Menorah, the soot from the candles burning the whole time, the wall there is a bit uh, dirty, and therefore we don't want the Kohen God wearing white clothes to walk or even end up touching the wall. So would the soot be would the soot be at the heart of the Kohen? Because there was the heart of the Menorah and there was the three Amis. steps up. The high Sorry? was three was three amas, eighteen fachim. That's the height of a person, the shoulders or machleg is rashi taisa. That's the height of a person's shoulders yeah, or his head. Yeah, but that's that's the that's the manure itself. But there wasn't there three steps. It was it wasn't us resting on the ground. You know, it was it was higher than the, than the slightly higher. Would have been slightly higher, not much higher. But that's a person's height. And I'm sure the the soot also probably runs down the wall a little bit. You know, when it's still moist. So that's the only reason why he didn't have him doing that. Okay, we'll continue tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll talk about the subject that they had regarding the, the wall itself. What it is, okay.